Hi, this is Tim, and welcome back. We are now building our book. We just started a file, set it up. We created a folder to put that file into. Uh, it's not saved. First thing we got to do, next thing we got to do, let's save that file and we'll name it, okay? All right, so this is Kovar. Um, it's it called malfunction test test oh one I'm always going to do more than one version so I just automatically number things okay so my job folder is Kovar malfunction test and into that I've placed a folder for my images with a number of samples that I want to use and the key here is that we have to save the file before we get started before you start dropping pictures in there because of the way InDesign makes a link between your document fold, your document file, and your image files. So we need to establish that how those things are uh, related within your file structure. So whether you're saving this on an external hard drive, whether you're saving it and working on it on the server, you need to keep all these elements together. So before we place any images, anything, we're going to save this file inside the folder and I've got a selection of images that I want to work with. Okay, so my name comes up. I've got my pages document open. I'm working on page number one. See how that's highlighted? I can double click on any other page and it'll bring me down to them. We can't tell what they are yet because they don't have any content, but I want to double click on that page. It's highlighted. I know that's the page I'm working on. Right now, I can't see anything. I'm in the preview mode, but I want to be in normal mode so I can see where my margin lines are, my page, the outside edge of my paper, and the red bleed line. So I'm going to do this one a little different. I want it to be a full bleed image and so I'm going to draw a picture box to fill this title page rather than having a border on it as I had my sample file. So I'm going to place my cursor right on the edge of that bleed line. It's going to be a square, so I'm holding down the shift key at the same time so I can't make anything other than a square. If I release the shift key, I can make different shaped rectangles but if I hold the shift key down it jumps back to its square shape and I'm going to drag that all the way down so it lines up with the red line. Okay. So I have my picture box. It extends beyond the bands of the black page line so that there's a little bit of space when that paper is running through the printer. Now I want to put a picture in there so I'm going to go to File, Place, or Command D. Command D is something you'll use over and over again. Takes me to my job folder, and I want to use the spine shot. It's actually not an x-ray, it's a an MRI, but that's all right. Now, comes in at the size and resolution that I've set, which is 300 dots per inch in which case this is too small to bleed to fill that image. So I'm going to boost the size of that. I'm going to stretch it. Now that can be a real problem because if you're worried about image quality, I'm really risking pixelizing this image. But in this case, that's all right with me if that, if that happens. But I'm going to have to run a print test to see how much pixelization I get. Uh, but as you can see, this is not all about uh, gorgeous tones or texture or anything like that. This is about weird graphic shapes. Okay, so I clicked inside that box. See how the blue outside line is highlighted? If I double click in that box, I get a slightly brownish red line. So we have to get used to this notion of controlling the box and controlling the contents in a box. See the blue line is where my 
box that I drew, the brown line, the brown outline, is the contents. So again, I'm holding the shift key and I'm dragging it out so that it extends beyond the bounds of the page, so that it bleeds off the edge of the page. Okay, that didn't come up. I must have clicked it awkwardly. That's all right. Nobody can tell. It looks okay for the moment. Now, I've made a change. I'm going to save it. All right, you don't have to do save as, just save it. Okay. You can see on my pages palette now I've got a mini representation of that page and it has the content in it. All right. So if I double click on page three, it drops me down to those blank pages and I can scroll up and down through the window, the document window, or if I just double click on the page I want to go to, it will bring it back to your main screen. Now, this is page number one in my book. It's the title page, so I need to have a title. So I'm going to click and drag a text box, and I'm sticking this off to the side because notice how my whole, oops, sorry, let's back up. That's a blue outline, and I want to put it on a separate layer. Almost forgot. So up here, I'm going to click on the layers palette, and you can see right now there's only one layer. Now you're used to working with layers in Photoshop. This is the same thing. If that palette isn't visible, go to Window and Layers. It's checked and it will be visible. So I just want to make a new layer and it'll give me a red outline. I just want to be able to control these two things separately. Okay, now we grab the Type tool and I'm going to drag and now I get a red box. Okay, it's no different. That red is not going to show up. It's just telling me that they're in different layers. But then I can also control the stacking of those elements on page on the page. Okay, so my title is malfunction. Like most things I do, I want it to be in Helvetica. Right. And in this case, I actually want not Helvetica regular, but I want Helvetica bold because I need to emphasize this a little bit. And when I was testing this out before, I wanted it to be 20 point size. Now, you will need to print out a bunch of stuff and get used to how big is 20-point type? How big is 12-point type? Just take some practice. Okay, so type comes up as black and that doesn't look so great. So, what I want to do is I want to reverse that out. I want that type to be white on a black background. So if I click, triple click, or go to my type tool, now that it's highlighted, even though I can't see the letters, I know they're there, and getting used to where things are hiding in InDesign takes a bit of practice. So that's where my little red border for my second layer comes in handy as well. I go up here to the contextual menu at the top, and I click on that little triangle and the fill color that I want. I don't want red. I can change that. You know, we can set those colors any way we want. But what I want is paper. I want no ink to be applied in that shape. So now you can see my little white type. Uh, it's going to fit right there on the black background. Now, of course, I need my name. So let's type Tim Kovar. I want this to be Helvetica again. And because I want a little bit of a difference in priority, I want this to be Helvetica regular. And I'm setting it to 17 point. So I can just highlight the point size there, type 17, hit the return key or the enter key, and it sets it to the right size. Hate it when my boxes stick out too much. So I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so it's a little bit tidier. And I'm going to bring it over here. And oh, <laughs> forgot to change it to white. Double click, triple click, go to my paper color or my type color, which in this case is paper. If you double click on that, then you can also get these dialog boxes and you can change those colors more like our Photoshop. Let's see if I can move this out of the way. Um, 
can change it with those color palettes, uh, the sliders, um, but that's not what I need. It's going to be white. Okay, now I've got both of those. Now I want to make sure those two guys are lined up, so I'm going to highlight that and check, and my X measurement across the page is 166. And on my name, oh, it's 166.5. So it's not a matter of looking at it and deciding, does it look lined up? I change the number, hit return, and now I know those things are exactly lined up. I go down here to my view mode, and I go to preview, and I can go, uh-huh. Image, title, name, okay. That's my page number one, the way I like it for the moment and now I'm going to go up to save those changes and then in the next video we'll start building the double page spreads okay thanks for watching